November 1, 2025, Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and welcome to 121 Point Mike Ground School. This video is about wind, what causes it, how it affects your plane, and what you need to know for your tests about crosswinds. Now, have you ever heard someone say that planes can't fly in high winds? I have. So let me ask you that question and pause for a second to think about it. Can airplanes fly in high winds? Long pause. I hear crickets, literally. Of course they can. They don't work in low winds, do they? We have to create gale force winds to even get off the ground, don't we? A light plane cruises around with tornado force winds off their noses. Airliners fly several times faster than the highest recorded winds ever on Earth. Planes can fly in high winds. It's required. The problem and the point that I think people are trying to make, though, is when airplane attempts to take off or land, right? That's when the high wind thing can become a problem. The airplane does not care about the ground or the wind direction in relation to it. Planes only care about airspeed. Planes only care about airspeed. Airspeed. So, what causes wind? Well, it's differences in pressure, typically caused by the sun. That's it. Wind is caused by difference in pressure. Air flows from high to low pressure, and that flow is called wind. Wind matters when you're on or near the ground. That's when the plane might do some funny things. Wind matters near the ground. Wind is going to try to push you downwind, just like a river pushes boats, boats, boats downstream. You're going to have to deal with wind from the second you get in the plane. The wind will try to pitch, roll, and yaw you if you let it. During your check ride, the examiner is going to watch how you position the controls during taxi. I have a video on that, so go check that out. Assuming you made it safely to the runway, though, and are lined up, you likely have a crosswind to deal with. Never does the wind seem to point straight down the runway. As you begin your roll, you'll ease off your crosswind correction on the ailerons as you pick up speed. At the start of your roll, your ailerons will be fully deflected right into the wind, and you'll roll them level as you increase to liftoff speed so that you don't strike a wingtip on the ground, because that'd be a very bad day. Once airborne, that eternal crosswind is going to push you off the center line, so you'll use the rudder to compensate, and you'll set up a crab angle so that you can track straight along the center line as you climb out. This tracking is especially important at airports with parallel runways, right? You certainly don't want to take off into the guy over there. You, you both want to stay on track. But now that we're above the trees, though, the wind really doesn't matter so much. And it's getting stronger by the second, right, as you transition into cruise and go faster. But now it's time to land. And you can bet that there's some amount of crosswind. Crosswind is simply the portion of the wind that's not pointing down the runway. You're going to need to know how to calculate it for your tests, uh, and, but wind has a speed and a direction, right? And so for you math people, that means it's a vector. If something has a speed and a direction, you can break it down into relative components relative to some coordinate system. In math, you've probably seen this before, right? Done along the x-y axis. If the vector is 5 and it's pointing 53 degrees from horizontal, we can say it's equivalent to two vectors here, uh, of one of 3 and one of 4. In flight, though, we use a coordinate system that's based on runway heading, because it makes the math a lot easier. You'll be able to bring your flight computers to your tests, though, so you won't have to know any trigonometry. Whew, right? <laughs> Big relief. Now, you'll probably see something like this in your flight manual to calculate your crosswind components. There's a bunch of arcs and some radial lines here. This would be your runway heading. If we look at the example that I've got over here, we say wind 12012, landing runway 9, right? Well, if you're landing runway 9, this is 090. The wind is from 120, which is 30 degrees off your runway heading, right? And then it says it's at 12 knots. So we'll come down here and find the arc that represents 12 knots. We'll have to interpolate because they're only in, you know, five knot increments. This yellow dot here represents 12 knots at 30 degrees. You come left to read your headwind component of about 10 knots, and you come straight down to read your crosswind component of about 6 knots. It's that simple. Of course, it would work, you know, if you had a, a wind from the left, because the angle between is still the same, even though this chart only goes to the right. 
You would use it the same for a left. Uh, you could also use it for tailwinds, I suppose, right? You would just, your runway heading, your wind would be behind you, and you'd read this backwards. Instead of a headwind component, this would be tail. Let's do another quick example here. Let's say that you're landing runway 36, and the wind is 50 degrees, uh, 050. So this is 360, we'll come over to 50, and if it's at 20 knots, we'll come straight on down. There's actually an arc for that. 20 knots is this point right here. So we'll come left and read a headwind component of about 13 knots, and we'll come straight down, and we'll read a crosswind component of, oh, about 16 knots. Now, if you want to do this the digital way, it's quite simple. With the Sporties Electronic E6B, you go to the wind button, you go down to crosswind, you type in the wind direction. We'll use our example from uh, the original one here. Wind was at 120, enter. Wind speed was at 12 knots, enter. Our runway was runway 9, enter. Here's your crosswind component, about 6, which is what we got here from our example. And the headwind is 10.4, which was about 10. Notice here it's got a little negative sign because uh, negatives mean headwind. If it was positive, it would be a tailwind. Let's run our second example here real quick. We'll enter back to the top. Our wind direction was 050, enter. Our wind speed was 20 knots, enter. And our runway was 36, enter. See our crosswind component was 15.3, which is about what we got a second ago. And our headwind is about 13 which is also what we got. So here you can do it graphically, or you can do it digitally with the Sporties Electronic E6B. Not too hard. Now you'll probably see a placard in the plane or a statement in the manual about maximum demonstrated crosswind component. That means what it says. Someone has tested the plane in a crosswind up to that limit. It's not a structural limit, but I would strongly treat it as a, you know, a strongly worded suggestion. In summary, Wind is just air flowing from high to low pressure, right? Keep your controls positioned correctly on the ground. And crosswinds, you got to know them and you got to know how to land in them. So practice it. But I'm going to show you crosswind techniques in a different video. But go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. That'll certainly help me out as we'll leave in a bunch of comments and engaging in lively discussions down below. Have you checked out one of those shirts? And thanks for staying with me on 121 Point Mike.